I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh, we can't do that. It's not time for that. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So do you go by Juliet Belasco or do you go by Juliet Jackson? Um, either, but Juliet Belasco cool. is good. Okay. And you're Brianna, Brianna right? Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, you got it right on the first time. You know, everyone says Brianna. Oh, they do? They do, because I'm, I'm located in Atlanta currently right now, so a lot of people, have, you know, they... Brianna? The Brianna type of uh, state, I guess, so... Mm -hmm. So welcome, welcome to the Not So Millennial podcast. I'm so excited to have you on here. I've talked with Mac and Joanna and now you, and I'm so excited. So I, my first question has to be like, one, how are you? But two, how was it being Shelby on the show? Well, I'm great. And being Shelby was wonderful. I just <laughs> loved Shelby. I love getting to play her every day showing up to work just felt like a blessing. It was so much fun. It must be amazing. So um, I don't know a lot about your marriage or anything like that. So let's tell the audience like were you already married to Byron while this was like being created and kind of like watching that vision come to life and then casting and all that good stuff. Yes, I was. And that was one of the most fun parts of the process because before, I think we were engaged when he was, it was just an idea. He hadn't even written it. So I got to see it all the way from the beginning. And it was something he actually wrote on his own on spec where normally it works like you sell an idea and do it. And he's like, you know, I just, I, ha I have this vision and it's hard to explain. I just want to write it how I want to write it and then try to go out and sell it. So yeah, I was there for the whole thing, all the hiccups on the writing process. That is amazing. Mac was telling me that Byron was like his long time, like he, he would go to the restaurant or wherever that Mac was serving and uh, there was like a bar there and he'd like go and have a couple drinks or whatever. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's how he ended up writing that character for him. I thought that was really neat. That's what Mac was telling me. And the funny thing with that is, so that bar where Byron and Mac became good friends is also where I met Byron. So I, on my first night working there, uh, my friend got me the job and I think he might've been sitting down talking with Mac, I'm not sure, but the only spot at the bar was next to him and I sat down and we talked until 4 a.m. So <laughs> we had a lot in common. Okay, so that bar, I'm gonna, um, so I'm moving to LA, but when I do, I'll definitely be sitting somewhere in that bar. Like, <laughs> for sure. The magic bar. <laughs> it's the magic bar. I'll just sit there and it will just, some, something will happen. Probably Nick Jonas. I mean, great. it could yeah, be Nick. Probably Nick, Nick yeah. <laughs> my husband, I tell everyone while I'm, it's like the joke of like my podcast. Everyone who comes on here, I tell them my husband literally is Nick Jonas's identical twin. It's ridiculous. Like Amazing. I said, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's creepy. I'll show you a picture later, but yeah, <laughs> it's weird. Um, so what was your favorite scene that you shot, you know, that you filmed on the show? Ooh, there were so many. I think the first one that came to my mind is just the scenes with Keith. And I yes! remember the laundry. I mean, I just had so much fun shooting that. And we got to do it a bunch of different ways. And that was just such a funny dynamic and kind of came out of nowhere. So I love those. And then a lot of the scenes with Alvy are great too, just because I think Shelby was around him a lot. So I knew how to deal with him, but just like when he's yelling at me or I'm working out or running in and, and dealing with him. And then of course, all of the pregnant scenes were probably actually my most favorite, just cause that was so special getting to shoot while pregnant. I, so like nobody, so my whole family has binge watched um, Kingdom because we're, well, we're, I'm distant, distant, distant family from uh, Joanna. So like we all support down here. Um, so we were, <laughs> we were watching the show and I was like, that's my cousin. Like I was so proud, you know, and then just like binge watching the whole thing. And then boom, you were pregnant. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. And then I, I really, I was like, man, they made that really realistic. Like I'm like looking at your belly. I'm like, she actually pregnant? <laughs> Did they actually film her pregnant? <laughs> How pregnant were you when you filmed that? I think I shot, you know, because it shoots for a while and there was a, you know, so when I started, I was already seven months pregnant and I shot all the way up to about 33 weeks pregnant. So I think the last day I shot wasn't even really 
a scene with dialogue, it was when um, Jay's baby was being christened. But, you know, I remember just be, everyone's like, wow, you're, you're working and my belly was out there. So that, that was pretty cool. And I remember being wild. Yeah, I was worried. I'm like, how long am I going to be able to shoot? And I, I felt great that first pregnancy. I'm like, oh, I could have gone right up until the end, you know, I, I felt good. So <laughs> I'm not done to my water breaks. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> they should have got that quote, like in the show, you know, like <laughs> <don't be laughs> it out. Here we are. <laughs> I, and now, so how many um, kiddos do you have now? Two. Two. Cool. Nice. Cool. You've been on filming pregnant again. <laughs> I would have had there been another season. I'm like, oh. Oh, it's coming. It, lady, it's coming. Like I, there's just, I mean, you can see the buzz starting and now it's really starting to roar. And I actually, well, I'm a social media strategist. So like on the agency side of things, I've actually been tracking like the traction of okay. the tour. Yes. And um, you guys, I mean, it's your share of voice is just doing this. So it's actually very cool to watch. Um, but you, you'll, get, you'll get your season four, I promise. Like, I love it. Tell Byron it's gonna be fine. He's gonna get like seven. Bucks. Thought there was gonna be another season, you know, when it was shooting, and even when it ended, we're like, "Yep, yeah, there's another season." And we all thought we we're gonna come back. Yeah. So it kind of came as a surprise. It didn't feel like anything had been wrapped up. Right. Yeah. For us, I mean, it was an okay ending point, but we thought we were getting more. Well, they the way that they ended it was perfect to have another season because it it does leave you kind of like well, this isn't done. There's no way that this is done. I mean, this, there's so much more to that story. Like, mm -hmm. we want to see what happens with, you know, Jay, and we want to see what happens with Christina. We want to see what happens with all those characters, and I, I don't feel, I don't know, I, I don't think anybody feels like it was really finished, so you'll definitely I get I want to see what happens with them as well. <laughs> 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 so how does that work? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a songwriter, but as far as, like, writing like does he do you just sit there and you I I don't even know how that works like you just write a story and then film it is that essentially how that works or yeah I mean it's a lot of it's a lot of work and that would be more you know Byron's genius mind right. but I, it's fun because I get to see him kind of come up with ideas or tell me what he's thinking about for the next episode and they have a writer's room so lots of times they'll all come together and think of possible ideas for the next show and he's telling me like they'll have boards up on the wall and like so you can kind of pinpoint different things and get it going and so it's it's collaborative but also solo That's process so as well but every time I mean I just loved getting every script and seeing what happened and also sometimes seeing like dialogue or conversations in my real life show up and I'm like oh we, I know what that's from. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, you know, especially because you get to see the background and you get to actually see it come to life. I feel like that just puts a whole other perspective on it, especially for you. Like you get to sit there and just watch it like unfold. Of course, we get support. Exactly. I just, there's just one time when it hit me so hard. I think it was in season two. And I just stopped and I looked around, you know, there's a set with hundreds of people and this vision come to life and it's just like I remember when this is just a thought and now like we're sitting here around all these wonderful people just everybody that worked on the show because I always worked in the gym at Navy Street yeah. and all the people all the uh you know background talent and featured talent were all actual fighters and a lot of the times it was the same fighters so we're just hanging around on set with great people and they'd be teaching me things in between takes you know like how to wrestle and how to do all this other stuff and I loved it. Did you, so do you feel like you took a part of that with you? Like, do you, do you practice MMA or anything like that? Do you, did you get you know, into I it? Wish, I, I, I kind of wish right when it started, I got more into training because I did a little bit. And when they teach, when, when they were teaching me different moves, I just, I loved it so much. And I tried to take some classes and then now, I mean, you can't, with COVID, you can't do anything. And it's, yeah. um, I think it's something, yeah, I was really into sports growing up and I think had I got started younger I would have really been into it three older brothers you know all this energy so it Are was you the youngest? youngest yeah you're <laughs> tough three older yeah. brothers my god you are tough you had <laughs> no boyfriend that would have been such a good outlet you know for all this <laughs> aggression you had on me to you know get it out punch it out so you got your first boyfriend when you were 22 and moved <laughs> <First edition laughs> out of college and 
you know. Luckily, they all went away to college, you know, by the time I was a sophomore in high school. So then oh, I, yeah. I safely had a boyfriend by the time I was, I think, a sophomore. <laughs> I love it. So I want to know more about Juliet. And I know the audience is going to want to know more about you. Um, so how did you get your start in acting? Did you, I mean, is it something you've always wanted to do? You, you know, how, tell me about that. Yeah, I think, I think it's something I always wanted to do. Just, you know, being in middle school and starting to do plays. I think that's yeah. kind of it hits everybody. And just in my middle school, they had dinner theater plays and just having that audience and doing something and making them laugh. It was just the best feeling and rehearsals and being with your friends and getting to bring things to life. So I think deep down, I always felt like, oh, I just, I'd love to be able to continue doing this in some respect. And then I moved to LA for college and I, you know, started studying acting more, um, you know, during college. And when I graduated, I just started auditioning, doing, you know, started off doing student films and commercials and just started working my way up to smaller films and, then becoming in SAG and then starting to get pilots and, you know, kind of slowly worked my way up from college and then to Kingdom. Well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what, um, so, you know, the whole thing about the Not So Millennial podcast, just to give you a little background about why this was started, it's, it's to bridge that communicative gap between the generations. And so and I know a lot of that happens, especially in the entertainment industry. I'm a pop artist, um, and I find that even working with some of the older generations, they have different visions. I have different visions. Sometimes we don't connect. Um, like It's almost like we're talking a different language. We were brought up in different times and different places and different ways of life. And so, you know, I love interviewing talent because it's a totally different sector of, you know, a lot of podcasts. They, you know, they interview business people and stuff like that. And I started out doing that, and now I'm like, like on talent because I think it's so important to share with the younger generations and the older generations kind of what the struggles are to get to where you are and how you overcame each of those obstacles and then what kind of advice you have for the people who are trying to do it after you. Because, I mean, everyone gets by from a little help with their friends, you know. <laughs> I butchered those lyrics. but <laughs> I mean, it's so important. It is. It really is. And, you know, th times change all the time, you know, now even it's so much different than when I first graduated college too. And it's just, you, I think you have a lot more opportunity now with the way things are. You don't have to necessarily be in LA. You can, it's really great. You, you don't have to sit around and wait as much now anymore, you know, waiting for that meeting or that audition. You can get started right now making, you know, you can make your own little video on TikTok. You can do anything. Isn't that crazy? Are you on TikTok? I'm not on TikTok. I'm thinking about it. Are you? <laughs> Are you on TikTok? Yeah, I am. I, I honestly, like, I'm not, I'm too busy. I usually am advertising for other people all the time, so I never have, <laughs> I never have a chance to advertise for myself. It's kind of like the worst, but um, yeah, no, you've got to be on TikTok. You could do all sorts of cute stuff, especially with Kingdom and, um, yeah. you know, your husband and your family and stuff like that. You could do a lot of cool different scenes. I mean, I want, it's something that I would love to do. I think the only thing holding me back is a three-year-old and a one-year-old. <laughs> like just <laughs> trying to get time for anything is really challenging um, in the best way. I mean, I'm, my days are filled with love, but you know, I'm also trying to write and it'd be one of those things that's like, ah, oh, like I just get, I want to schedule them. Tell us about the obstacles that you faced on the come up and um, how you overcame your obstacles. Because there's so many. I'm <laughs> like, I could talk about this for hours. I'll just try to keep it short. Um, because starting off on anything, you know, it feel, in LA, I, I came here, I knew zero people, no contacts, nobody in the family. Right. So, it, you know, it takes a long time to really get to know people, know what you're doing, make your way in. It, it does. And it, it's hard, too, because LA is, you have to make a living, you have to find a way to support yourself. So I had a lot of jobs at first, bartending catering, you know, like promotions, <laughs> Bud Light promotions. So there's definitely a lot, of, a lot, a lot of that. And I don't know, I think what managed to keep me going is that I always had little, like I always felt like I was slowly making my way up. There's always something I was working on at the time. So, you know, right out of college, it was building up like a reel. So even though I was, you know, I was always working on little projects with friends or, you know, non-paid stuff, but it felt like it was for a purpose or 
going out for commercials and, yeah. you know, then I started doing like, not lines, but featured work in shows. So it was like a character, but with no lines, like I was a pregnant girl on ER or like a body shot girl. And that helped me get into SAG. So then I was in SAG and then, you know, next thing I know I had a reel. And then with that, you know, so I always felt like even if the steps were small, I was working towards something. I never felt like I was at a standstill or I didn't know what I was doing or why I wanted to do it. Um, so that was always important. I think, you, I think to know what you want and to be having fun while you're doing it is also important because you can't ever be like, oh, when, when I get there, then I'll, then I'll enjoy myself. So it's like, if you want your podcast to be big, hopefully you're enjoying it at the beginning and as it gets bigger, you know, like every step of the way. For sure. Well, I get to and, talk to awesome people like you. So yeah, my, yeah, I plan on it. <laughs> I plan on it being big and I plan on interviewing lots and lots of talent and helping lots of, lots of people. So it's sure. great. It's amazing. <laughs> and I see a lot of my friends too doing the same things. Like, you know, not much happening. And then I had a friend make her own little YouTube video that got over 2 million views. And that got her one of the biggest managers at, you know, one of the biggest management companies from that, just because they thought that she was so talented. And that was like, you know, she'd made her own web series. She had done stuff and not gotten many views. And then this one thing that she didn't think, she just thought she was making a fun video with her friend was it. And then, and then she sold a pilot to ABC and now she's written on, um, I think two to three different hit shows. So that's just for making, you know, all these things that she thought like, oh, like, can I scrounge, you know, the money together to make my own thing? Is it worth it? Is nobody going to see it? And she stuck with it. And now she has a career. Wow. No, seriously, everyone needs to hear that. I hope you're listening because yeah, everyone needs to hear that. See, it's funny. It's well, it's not really I don't know. So I'm, so I'm a pop artist by day. Well, I'm a social media strategy, <laughs> you know, um, contractor by day and I'm a pop artist by night. So it's kind of like, I feel like I'm living these two different lives and the music, you know, just like a lot of, for a lot of people it's acting or it's art or it's, you know, that one thing dancing. And they're like, how am I ever going to make money at this? Like, it's going to take forever getting up there and making money at this. So I, it's funny that you say that because literally Three months ago, I was like, I'm just going to write a song called Survive because it's 2020. So I'm just going to write this <laughs> random song. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm going to make an apocalyptic music video. And like now that's almost at half a million streams. And like, it's incredible. I can't it's, wait to watch it. Oh, I'll show Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, it's, um, I, but you know, that, that kind of thing that you were talking about, your friend had no idea that that was going to like do anything. I was like, are you kidding? Like, I, <laughs> I'm used to getting like these massive, like I'm having to beg for sponsorships and earn sponsorships and figure out how I'm going to pay for this next music video. And then the one music video I just like outsourced with almost little thought, like very little thought and wrote about what, yeah, it was just. That's that. so cool. And I love hearing those stories. You know, I just love hearing them from people, from friends, just to know how possible it is because it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, you're doing it. So there you go. <laughs> Inspiration, though. Yes, inspiration. For sure. Um, so what are, and you know, on the show, I'm sure there were many, you know, you talked about some of your favorite scenes, like what I got to ask, what was it like being married to Mac? <laughs> to Mac? Well, we didn't get to explore that very much because that kind of happened. That was like almost the last scene we shot. You know, so <laughs> like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So th it was interesting because um, I don't know if I knew, you know, and even in the last season, it was like, oh, Shelby's not giving Mac the time of day. Shelby's not giving, you know, Shelby's not giving him the time of day. So I think it was something that continued even after the it ended, continued to grow. And we didn't totally get to see that. So I'd like to be able to explore that more. Where would you like the marriage to go? Have you thought about it? I did. And I think I'd like to see them happily together with a couple kids. Cause, and I even joked with Byron, I'm like, Adam, everyone on the show, like Mac and Shelby can be the happy ones. You know, <laughs> like we find yeah. some sort of normalcy in this crazy world that we can, you know, he has a steady job. I can have a steady job and raise a family and, you know, that's what's really important. You realize that at a certain point in your life, it's like, we have, we have this and it's beautiful. It is. And you know, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Period. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, in TV, you always need conflict. So who knows how long you stay happy, but I like that they're happy. <laughs> yes, me too. And honestly, it was just refreshing seeing something with all that turmoil that was happening. It was really nice seeing something on the screen that wasn't like you had to hold your breath <laughs> to, to watch it. And we binge watched it. My husband and I, we like, we binged it. And like, it was a lot to take in all at once. Cause I mean, every season had its, com I mean, just turmoil and every single, whether it was like a little thing or like a really big thing, we won't go into that. Cause I know some people haven't seen it yet. No. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I just couldn't, like, it was really nice at the end seeing, like, you pregnant and your interactions. Honestly, some of my favorite interactions were with you and Paul. How? <laughs> like, oh, my God. I Because he, what kind of talent? Like, I don't even. He is in another world. And the funny thing, I randomly saw him this morning. And, I, you know, I haven't seen oh. anybody because of COVID. And I went, I'm like, I just need to get out of the house. So I went to go pick up a coffee from my favorite coffee shop and I was like we pointed at each other and we're like what how are you and he recently got married so I'm so happy for him and oh, yeah. congratulations Paul <laughs> but no I remember seeing his scenes in season one and my jaw just dropped I'm like this guy is so talented and of course he ended up getting a much bigger role because yeah. everybody loves Keith <laughs> Uh, honestly, like, he kind of, like, I didn't know how to take Keith's character at first. I was like, okay, so, you know, he's a little off and, you know, whatever. And then, like, as his relationship with Brian keeps building, I was like, oh, my God, it's a brotherhood. Like, it's a legitimate, like, he, that, that's his ride or die right there. And, you know, and then it gets, and then it gets even to a bigger role. And I'm like, my God, <laughs> yeah. Keith, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> and it's such a unique relationship. I think that's why... I love watching it. It's not something you see all the time. Was it hard, um, especially in the laundry scene, was it hard not to crack, like, uh, yeah. like at him? Well, because, like, he's great, and he's funny, and he makes you laugh, <laughs> you know, and that's how he is on set, too. He's very kind, and on, on the long days, he's always making everybody laugh and telling jokes and all that, so, of course, and it's like, there's a little rivalry, but I love him, so. Well, I have to say, your chemistry with Alvi on the screen was awesome. Like even the way he would just like look at you like <laughs> like he would just like, <laughs> like <laughs> I always felt deep down like he really loved me. You know, he just <laughs> didn't totally know how to show it. <laughs> of course. Like honestly he's he's a very intense character. I don't think I've seen Frank in anything and I'm not like a, a cinema buff or anything like that. I don't think I've never I don't think I've seen him in a role that was or sensitive and like it's always rough and tumble like I just saw him in a movie called Point Blank I watched that the other day on Netflix I haven't seen that honestly it could be an extension of uh Kingdom like it really like <laughs> I'll be before Kingdom <laughs> like the like before <laughs> it was ridiculous I guess that's what you know he does it well so <laughs> he does I, if I were Shelby I'd probably been like you good like want me to get some more coffee with you okay <laughs> oh, i so. love that um so you know what what advice for up and coming actors and actresses and writers i mean you're married to a writer a very mm -hmm. creative person you're a very creative person um and you're in la that's where that's where the magic tends to happen that's why i'm moving out there um next year so i'll see you over there maybe <laughs> um but what advice do you have for everyone who is trying to make their way up? I think, um, you know, like I said, sticking with it and doing it for the love of it, you know, being okay with the process of it and, you know, not having to be perfect, not having to be perfect at first, that it takes time, you know, especially in, in writing and drafts and it's like, I think I go back and tell that to myself too. Like, it's not going to happen. You know, you think everyone thinks it's going to be a year and it's like, maybe it will be. I don't want to like put that out there that it's not, but, um, but just have fun with it. The whole, like the whole way. And I think if you really love what you're doing and you stick with it and you're genuine at it and you put your all in and you put that out everywhere you go, that it'll come back to you. It really will. I love that. Yep. I think you're a hundred percent right. Not like, uh, I, I, 
I firmly believe, and I'm a, I'm a vision board person too. So, you know, like you put it out there, like yeah. I wrote it down, you write, did you ever do that? I'm, I'm curious. I don't know. I, I'm huge into stuff like that. I don't know if I ever had an actual vision board type thing, but you know, I'm starting from, I don't even know when, but just always about being very clear about what I want and seeing it and um, going for it and creating steps to have it happen every day, you know, just really being able to, I feel like I've always been able to see what I want for my life, you know, and have that vision and be able to see that it's possible. Cool. That's awesome. Shelby, thank you so thank much you. for joining us on the podcast. I'm going to be sharing this in the next two days um, and make sure you share it with all your family and friends and we'll get more people on the show. And uh, I really enjoyed talking with you. And I think a lot of people are going to learn from what you said today. I enjoyed talking to you as well. And best of luck with everything. I can't wait to hear your song. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send it to you now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye. Have a good day.